God appeared to Abraham twice. The first time was in all of the Chaldees. If we study the Bible carefully, we shall see that in all of the Chaldees, God did not appear to Abraham's father, but to Abraham. Abraham, however, did not accept that calling immediately, and God sovereignly caused his father, Terah, to bring the family from Ur to Haran. They stayed there until Terah died. Abraham, staggering in answering God's calling, brought about his father's death. God took his father away. Then at Haran, God appeared to Abraham the second time. We can see by this that God has a specific purpose in dealing with people. I do not believe that any of you reading this message will respond immediately. If God would were to visit you, we all are the children of Abraham. And children are always like their fathers, because Abraham hesitated in following God. God had to appear to him the second time. The calling of God. God not only appeared to Abraham twice, but He called him twice. The first calling of God was when Abraham was at Ur. According to Acts seven, God called Abraham out of his country and out of his kindred. But in the second calling at Haran, God called Abraham out of his country, his kindred, and also out of his father's house. So God appeared to Abraham twice and called him twice. The first time God called him out of his country and kindred, mentioning nothing of the father's house. So the father's family also came out of Ur. At the time of God's second calling, however, He told him not only to leave his country and kindred, but also his father's house. Abraham had two appearances of God and two callings of God. These appearances and callings of God show that God was the origin of God's calling. The experience of the cult, three being one. As you read the book of Genesis, you will notice that the records of Adam, Abel, Enoch, and Noah are quite distinct one from another. The records of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, however, overlap. Genesis, speaking of them, considers them as one corporate man. Isaac's life story began in chapter twenty-one, and Abraham's life story ended in chapter twenty-five. Jacob's life story began in chapter twenty-five, and Isaac's life story ended in chapter thirty-five. Jacob's life story, supplemented by that of Joseph, ended in chapter fifty. The significance of this overlapping is that, according to the experience of life, these three persons are one man, a corporate man. When God created mankind, He created man in a corporate way. For Adam was a corporate man. It is not a small thing to see this. Do not think that as a caught one, you are complete as an individual. None of us is a complete individual unit. We all need one another. You need me, and I need you. In like manner, Abraham needed Isaac and Jacob. Isaac needed Abraham and Jacob, and Jacob needed Abraham, Isaac, and Joseph. All of them needed the others in order to have the completion of God's calling. When some read this, they may ask, "Don't you believe that Abraham was an individual person?" Of course, I believe it, just as I believe that you are an individual person. But the Bible tells us that we are members. A member can never be a separate and complete individual unit. When a member becomes individually complete, that means theft. My thumb, for example, is a member of my body. It is not separately complete or individual. For it, if if it were, that would be theft. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob being one God, the God who came to call this corporate person and who dealt with this corporate man was the Triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. When God spoke to Moses out of the burning bush, He said, "I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob." In Exodus three, we see that Moses was called by the angel of the Lord, that the angel of the Lord was the Lord Himself, and that the Lord Himself was the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God did not say, "I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and Moses." No, he said that he was the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. 
This God, who is the Lord, is also the angel of the Lord. Can you figure this out? If you read Exodus 3, you find that the verse 2 speaks of the angel of the Lord and verse 4 of the Lord. Then in verse 6, this angel of the Lord, who is the Lord himself, told Moses, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Do you believe that these are three gods? Here, there are three plus two others, the angel of the Lord and the Lord. Are these five individuals five gods? The angel of the Lord and the Lord surely are two. Can we say that the angel of the Lord is just the Lord himself? We can, because the Bible tells us so. No one can exhaust the study of Exodus 3. Eventually, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, God said to Moses, I am that I am. God seemed to be saying, I am the angel of the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. I am that I am. I don't care whether you understand this or not. I am that I am. I don't care whether you agree with this or not. I am that I am. This is our God, the God who worked upon the corporate man. This God was the angel of the Lord. The Lord himself, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the great I am. The God of Abraham, the Father. God's calling to Abraham was the work of God the Father. Abraham's original name was Abram, which means an exalted father. And the name Abraham that replaced these names means the father of a great multitude. Both of these names have the basic thoughts of the father. The first in the triune God is the father, and Abraham was the first of the called ones. Abraham was the father of the called ones, and the first of the triune God is also the father. The father is the source of life. He is also the source of plan and purpose. God the Father had a plan, a purpose. Because he had a purpose, he selected and predestinated in eternity past. Eventually, in time, the Father came in to call, justify, accept, and care for the called ones. God the Father's work is to select, predestinate, call, justify, accept, and take care of the called ones. Both selection and predestination precede the matter of calling. If you read Romans chapter 9, verse 11, you will see that these two items are found in, with Jacob. Nevertheless, in Abraham, we see nearly all of the experiences that are related to God the Father. This is very meaningful. The God of Isaac, the son. Isaac was the son. It is very interesting to see that the second of the triangle God is also the son. What is a son? A son is one who comes out of the father, who inherits all that the father is and has, and who accomplishes all that the father desires. If you look at Isaac's history, you will find that he was just like this. He was out of the father. He inherited everything of the father, and he worked to accomplish his father's purpose. This is the experience of Isaac, the experience which fixed the second of the triangle God, God the son. The Lord Jesus, as the Son of God, came out of the Father, inherited all that the Father is and has, and accomplished all the Father's will. Isaac's life corresponds to his.